Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and today we are going to be making my very first original character. Now, this is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time, but I've been putting it off um, to try and build up my skills a little bit and then try to tackle this problem. But um, as some of you may know, Pin Shape is holding a contest right now that the uh, grand prize is a Form 2 printer. And that is something that I would like very much. So I knew that I had to enter this contest, and the contest was for an original character. So that gave me a jump start and pushed me to create this guy right here. And as an added bonus, this can be printed without supports. His name is Lord Cavra, and I will take you through the creation process right now. Okay, so normally when I start these builds, um, I have some sort of image to go off of, but since this was a character of my own design, um, I had to create those images myself. And now, um, judge me for my modeling, not my drawing, because uh, I am not that great at drawing, as you can clearly see. But, um, and I always draw in the style of anime. Don't know why, that's like all I can draw. But um, this was my first idea right up here. And you can see he's like um, kind of wearing uh, armor, sort of a maybe exosuit there. I was thinking something along those lines. Um, but I ultimately decided um, with the backstory that I'd created for him, that doesn't make as much sense. Um, and I think that would have been uh, quite a bit harder to get uh, to print without supports. And uh, as you can see, I created like a hood and stuff like that. But I ultimately scrapped that idea. I do like the hood look though. Um, and then this was kind of my second one. This one I kind of figured out more what I wanted to go for. Um, and this is actually very close to what I ended up with. The pose is right. Um, just some of the clothing changed. Um, and then this was just kind of a more detailed um, look into him. And I was originally going to have a scar on his eye, but I decided against that. Seemed a little too cliche. So this isn't exactly what I went with, but this was the base that I started modeling. So with these in mind, let's get modeling. In order to create this model, I knew that um, Fusion 360 wouldn't get me the details that I was looking for this, so I knew that I had to go to ZBrush Core. But that posed quite a bit of a problem because this is um, the second model that I've ever tried to make in ZBrush Core. And um, so I'm still very new to the program and uh, it caused quite a bit of headache, but I was eventually able to get what I liked. So in order to do this, I started out by using Z-Spheres um, and just sort of blocking out the main body. And that's a great way just to get the general shape, that way you can go in and add details later. After the main body shape was there, I brought in a cylinder and um, just started sculpting it until I could get it to uh, sort of look like the robe that would go around him. Now being so new to this, I knew that I couldn't beat the other contestants um, based on my skill alone in terms of modeling, but one of the categories is technical excellence and ease of printing. So my idea was maybe I could get some points up on them if I could make this print without supports. And so that's what I'm doing here. And my solution for that was to use a robe that's a little bit flowy in different places and um, wrap a cape around the back of him to sort of pick up the slack, um, literally, where uh, it would need supports otherwise. So I knew that I had to block out the main shapes first, get everything there, and then I could try to work with the cape in order to get it um, to print without supports. Brought in a rectangle for the cape and just started moving pieces of it around. Um, I wasn't sure how I was gonna get the folds in there because um, I've never really tried modeling any sort of fabric or anything before, but I eventually ended up going with the clay buildup tool and I would um, kind of identify where I would want creases and sort of ripples in the cape and the clothing and I would just build up in one area and um, use the alternate build up where it pushes in um, right next to it and then smooth it out and that actually gave a really really nice wrinkled look. So at this point I was kind of following my rules of um, start with the base shape and then work your way in and work on details. So. I was just kind of blocking everything out, leaving it very rough, and then I would come back later and really, really refine it. Um, I decided that I wanted to show off that he was a mage a little bit, so I decided to put fire in one of his hands. And now I'd never modeled fire either, so uh, this was kind of interesting. What I ended up doing was just taking a blob, pulling out specific areas, and moving it around to make it look like it was kind of flowy and undulating. And I think that worked out all right. Then after I had all the basic shapes, I went in and started adding details where I could. And this is where you can see all of the um, clay buildup for the fabric, and I ended up using the rake tool for the hair. 
and that actually worked out pretty well as long as I was conscious of where the hair strands should be going. So I didn't want to rake in a cross hatching pattern because hair naturally flows um, in one direction. So I made sure to follow that and I think it turned out pretty good. So with all that, it's ready to print. I printed this out on my DaVinci 1.0 Pro using Hatchbox Yellow PLA. I printed it with no supports, no raft or anything like that, and at 0.1 millimeter layer height. After it was done printing, I handed it off to my wife for painting. So she started it out by priming it using some filler primer. And she did quite a bit of sanding here and there to remove visible layer lines. Um, and she ultimately got this thing incredibly smooth. It looks amazing. And this was sort of a unique situation as well because um, being a unique model, uh, we didn't have any colors to go off of. And I didn't really have any colors in mind while creating him, but um, I left the rest up to her because she ultimately knows um, a lot more about what colors look together than I do. And then she went in with her acrylic paints and paintbrushes and just began painting in the uh, main areas. She chose a dark purple color for the main robe then she chose a really, really nice red color, um, almost a crimson, for the cape. And I think it actually goes really well with the robe. And see, these are colors that I never would have picked, but I think ultimately look amazing. So that's why I left the color choices up to her. At this point, she had all of the fabric areas painted. She knew she needed to add a little bit of depth to it. So she took it to her airbrush and chose some colors that were just slightly darker than the ones on there and she carefully sprayed in the different areas um, to give the clothes a little bit more depth and let the shadows show up just a little bit better and ultimately provide a little bit more contrast and make the whole thing pop just a little bit more. After that was done it was back to painting with the paintbrush. She chose a very dark brown color for the um, sort of top of the cape, the, the armored area up there, and the belt. Next up, she painted the um, sort of elemental parts of this, the crystal and the fire. For the crystal, she chose a um, sort of a neon green color and kind of accentuated a little bit to look like a stone or a crystal, but also look like it's active um, in producing some sort of magic. And for the fire, she just um, carefully gradiented um, some reds, yellows, and oranges to get the, um, the look of a fire. And then from there, it was just the finishing touches, adding in the skin color a little bit to the hair, and um, painting the eyes in. And then we are left with the final product, and this thing looks amazing. I can't believe um, how well my wife was able to make this look. This was by far the biggest project for both um, me and her, and I think it really shows off her skills. All right, guys, well, there you go. We have Lord Cabra. Well, I think this thing turned out awesome, and I was really kind of glad that uh, my wife and I could collaborate on this because when I made this, I had no idea what kind of colors I wanted. Um, I knew that I kind of wanted his hair to be gray. Other than that, I had no idea. So big props to her for finding some cool colors and making it look cool like this. And for all the work she did on this, she really did amazing. And one of the things I was most happy about is that I was actually able to get this to print without supports. Um, I honestly didn't think I would be able to do it, but I was trying as hard as I could. And um, I'm super happy that, it, that I got there. Now, as a part of this contest, you had to write a little backstory. So I have given this guy um, a little bit of a story. It's on the pin shape page. There is a link in the description where you can find um, both the files to print this and more information on that story and um, as this as a print. This model was actually really tough. Um, it took me um, a good week and a half of modeling to get it. I think something like 15 to 20 hours just pure modeling. And that is due to me just being incompetent in ZBrush because as I mentioned, this is only the second thing that I've created in ZBrush. So there were some very dark times um, throughout the course of modeling this, but I'm glad that it happened this way because it gave me that push that I needed to really 
dive in and learn ZBrush, and after this, I feel much more confident. Um, I, I've still got a long ways to go, but this will definitely give me a good foundation to work on. Hey guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this model. Um, like I said, you can find the files at Pinshape. There's a link down in the description. And also, if you would like to see the full um, videos of me modeling this, just sped up slightly, um, and the full painting video where you can see exactly what my wife did to paint this, uh, those links to those videos are um, down in the description. They're just on my second channel where I dump all, the, all those large files. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. And until next time, keep creating.